Hey guys, it's Chef False Morel here, and today we're gonna be cooking up some forest cakes, which is my version of crab cakes uh, with lion's mane instead of crab. So, um, here I have some <clears throat> very old lion's mane that I did not harvest on time. Um, usually it will start to go yellow a little bit first, and it starts to get a bit more bitter. Um, this is a bit after it starts to go yellow. So um, I'm gonna harvest this just to show you guys how to harvest from a kit. And um, this is actually the first fruiting as well. So I'll probably still get another second fruiting out of this, maybe even a third if I'm lucky. You could just break it off. And I don't think that would damage the mycelium, but I like to uh, just cut it out and I'll usually cut it from the bottom. Sometimes right from the top will kind of push it down and break it off a bit. And it's super easy. It was just coming through a little slit in uh, the bag. You can see right through the middle there is just where it was growing through the bag. I'm gonna set this aside. And we have some other lion's mane that we're gonna cook with, which was uh, generously provided to us by Kathy Hunter, a local uh, mycologist, and you can buy her mushroom kits or just her mushrooms at the local farmer's market, typically. Okay, so here we have some of the lion's mane that has been provided to us generously by Kathy Hunter. Um, I'll let you guys take a closer look at this nice big chunk. It's nice and white and um, not turning yellow yet. It's um, got tons of nice little hairs coming off it here, but in the back, it's actually uh, quite dense, um, kind of spongy, and it'll actually have quite a bit of give when we're cutting into it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these into about quarter inch slices, maybe a little bigger. Here is a nice lion's mane chunk. You can see it's made up of several little groups, kind of, but it's all um, all connected and quite dense. Um, it's got a good bit of give to it in the middle there, but uh, has a nice meaty texture once it's cooked up. And I'm gonna fry those in garlic olive oil, a little bit of olive oil, not too much, and some salt. Uh, we really want to get the mushrooms uh, sweating so we can get the moisture out of them. Okay, so here we have some of the lion's mane cooking. Um, first batch here. I'm just gonna do a little flip. Um, Should have maybe flipped it a little bit earlier, but that's okay gonna need to sweat out for a bit still um, and I had it covered just because I find that helps to raise the heat of it everywhere and uh, as soon as you take that lid off whew, and um, let it breathe a bit it'll boil off that moisture that um, the lid helps to kind of pull out of it um, most people would say you shouldn't cook the mushroom covered like that typically I would agree. Um, in this recipe, I want to get it uh, really nice and dry so that it binds and uh, absorbs the egg yolk and the other ingredients um, once it's squished up. So I think I think all this helps that quite a bit. Flip them and then we'll flip them maybe a couple more times as we uh, cook them, and I'll definitely um, lower the heat as they're cooking as well. But they're looking pretty darn good. I'm gonna give them just a sprinkle of salt. And then uh, I'll see you guys once it's all been cooked. So here we have some lion's mane that was actually harvested um, from the wild, not from a kit. And it does have some nice uh, forest spice in there. Um, 
I typically don't mind it, but uh, lots of people do, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I prefer to clean my mushrooms when I do. Um, so I try not to get the mushroom wet if I can avoid it. I prefer to get an old toothbrush and I'll use that to uh, brush and clean the mushroom. It works pretty well for the lion's mane as it can get between all the little hairs. Um, it's also pretty uh, strong, so it's good for lobsters and other mushrooms like that that need a bit more scrubbing. But as you can see, the mushroom is changing his appearance as it's getting quite wet. And that will mean that there will be more cooking time involved as there will be more moisture to cook out of the mushroom. Um, so we have our mushrooms cooking over here. This batch is just about done. I'm gonna take them off and um, actually dice them. But I just wanted to take a minute to show you guys um, when mushrooms should be harvested, if not just before. You can see how these are starting to yellow and there's quite the contrast to the um, actual inside of the mushroom there. Um, so at this point, I would probably just take the mushrooms and cut that bit of yellow off um, as it can get quite bitter at that point. And it's a bummer. There isn't that much of the mushroom, but we still have quite a bit of nice mushroom flesh here that we can um, eat and really enjoy. I find the mushroom gets quite bitter and uh, just doesn't taste quite as nice once it starts to get that yellow. Um, but this is all nice and white, great texture. We're still gonna cook this up and eat that. Hey guys, so I've got all the mushrooms cooked up now. I've gone ahead and diced some of them and minced some garlic. I just thought I'd include you guys and show you um, the process, how that works kind of. Um, very good question that my genius girlfriend and camera assistant um, had was why did I cook them in the steaks or the slices as opposed to just uh, dicing them and cooking them that way. Uh, mostly personal preference, I find it's easier to cook them and make sure they're cooked thoroughly. And also it helps them to kind of retain some of their juices, I find it doesn't get quite as dried out that way. Um, keep some of the taste in. So one of the things that goes with that too is I can chop them a bit faster, I find. I've got these steaks here and I like to just stack them on top of each other and I'll slice them lengthwise and um, give them a spin and calm again and uh, toss them into the bowl for the mix. I go off calls for one clove of garlic, so I can go on ahead and use six. Use as many as you like. I typically start with breadcrumbs. Um, again, the recipe calls for a half a cup per pound of lion's mane mushrooms, um, and you can do that. I've made it several times, so I'm just going to go ahead and and there's probably a bit more than a half a cup in here, but I have uh, probably more than a pound of lion's mane. Next we'll add our eggs. The recipe I go off calls for two eggs and one more egg yolk. I'm just going to go ahead and use three eggs. There's a bit more mushrooms in here than the recipe would originally call for. Now we're making a mess. You can go with whatever seasoning spices you like. I usually go with 
some black pepper. And then a healthy amount of dill. And maybe a little more, just to be safe. And you could add more garlic too, if you want at this point, or some diced onions, um, really that's up to you. I usually would add <clears throat> a bit of diced onions, but there's so many mushrooms in this, I'm excited to have it pretty much just like to do is I will take my mixture and just plop a nice ball of it onto a mason jar lid. It's just your standard mason jar lid um, with the little detachable bottom there or top if you will. Um, and the benefit of this is we'll be able to push down on that mushroom top to really compress it and help it get it into shape. So I'll push the outside ring down first. Thank you. And then I'll push down that top just to really get it into shape. stuff the middle of the mason jar lid um, that way you're not uh, kind of clamping it with the ring and it gives it uh, somewhere to go to fill in all those spaces and gaps and remember half the fun of this is making a mess so feel free to get right in there To wrap it up, um, the lion's mane crab cakes or forest cakes, if you will, are looking pretty done. Um, I like mine a little extra toasted since that's where I cook all my food, whether I like to or not. So that's a nice shot of the finished cake there. There's lots of uh, different ways to dress them up. What I like to do is I will add a nice healthy sized dollop of spicy mayo or in this case some nice spicy chipotle mayo and then drop some green onions on top. great way to have and to get some nice protein in your diet. Um, Lion's mane is great for the brain. It's been toted as fighting off Alzheimer's and dementia later in life. And it's known for being great for neurogenesis or building new uh, brain synapse connections in the brain. Um, and actually I have a friend who I gave some to last time I made them and they were up all night because they just found them so uh, mentally stimulating. I'm hungry, so I'm gonna dig in. Enjoy guys. <laughs> 